Hello everyone, how's everybody doing today? Thank you for joining us for our stick class this morning. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, before we actually start, thanks to Coach Jared for covering Tuesday's class. I hope everybody enjoyed it. Uh, Coach Ray will be teaching this coming Saturday's class. But let's go ahead and get started for today. We're gonna move the joints around, then we're gonna hit the floor. We're gonna do some floor-based dead bug series this morning, and then we'll finish up with some stretching. So we're gonna really work on that floor-based core strength. All righty, so let's go ahead and grab your stick. We're gonna set our feet apart. Nice wide base. Let's wake those feet up first thing. So here's my horse stance. Nice wide base. Here's a little bit of a side profile for you. So the stick is gonna be placed at 12 o'clock. Arms like the way with the bottom slightly angled in towards you. Hands are gonna be stacked about chest level, dropping the hips down a couple inches towards the floor and making sure that we're tucking that pelvis underneath us. So if someone had a string at your, at your groin area and they were pulling it forward, they'd be pulling that pelvis underneath you. Let's get that head stacked over the shoulders and the shoulders stacked over the hips. And from here, we're slightly just gonna come up onto, into extension on the toes. And then let's drop down, nice and slow. When we come down slow, imagine that you're bringing your heels back down on eggshells and you don't wanna break those eggshells. You, you wanna keep them just as they are. Drive back up, and when we're at the top, stay there in extension for a little bit, and then bring the heels back down. Let's go three more reps. Back up, and when you're at the top also, think about where your weight is on your feet. We don't wanna to be too far out to the edges of the pinkies, and, then, and we don't wanna collapse in too much on the big toe. Two more reps, and if you notice that Chain, the elevation of my head is not changing. My hips actually come underneath me a little bit more. Last rep, here we go, ready? Heels up, and now let's see what we got here. Hover that stick. Let's work those feet. Keep structure. Stick down, and bring your heels back down. Nicely done. All right, let's get those hips moving and grooving. Nice wide base with the feet. Take that stick, place it right against the right instep. Place the ha uh, hand right at the about, uh, top of the head level, three o'clock position. We're gonna push that stick into the floor about 40% tension, and now we're gonna shift laterally to the right hip, and we're gonna bring the stick across our body to the nine o'clock position. And now we're gonna come back up. Now we're gonna shift to the left hip and pull that right arm back. Sink into that left hip, pull that right arm back, and now come back to center, and we're gonna go the opposite direction again. Pushing the hip to the right and bringing the right hand across. Coming back up, shifting the hip to the left, shifting to the left hip, pulling that right hand back. One more of each. Back to center, and now let's switch sides. Stick is inside the left instep. Left hand is at nine o'clock position. Hand is just about top of the head level. Push the stick into the floor about 40% tension. And now we're gonna sink into that left hip and pull the stick across to the right. Come back to center, sink into the right hip and pull that left arm back. Back to center. Follow along, switch to the other side. One more to each side. And on one of these directions, or multiple directions, you may feel that you don't have as much range of motion as you do on the others. That's perfectly fine. We just work on getting better at it, right? Okay, let's grab that stick, place it at sternum level, parallel to the floor. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna work some rotation and some coordination with the lower extremity, also by doing some stepping. So here I'll take a little bit of a side profile for you. Make sure those arms are extended, so we want no, no flexion in the elbows, so really get those arms reaching out. Here we're gonna shorten the stick, so I'm gonna push in on it about 40% tension. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna step forward with my left foot and rotate to my left. 
step back. And now I'm gonna rotate to my right and step forward with the right. Step back, two more to each. Left foot forward, rotate to the left. Keep that back heel up on the right heel, on the right foot. Step back to the right. Keep that left heel up, work that left toe extension. Push back with the right foot, one more in each direction. Step back, step your forward with the right. Step it back, excellent. Now let's pull apart on the stick, boom. So it's a six foot stick, make it six and a half feet in length, about 40% tension. You feel your posterior or back of the shoulder arm line, pull apart, same exact thing. Step to the floor with the left, rotate to the left. You're gonna feel some slightly different sensations. Step back and step forward with the right, rotate to the right, pull apart on that stick. Step back, two more on each side, here we go. You may find that it's a little bit more difficult to rotate when you pull apart on the stick versus pushing in on the stick. One more to each side, but you got that whole posterior sling activated. Step back, one more with the right. And relax, nice. Let's get some hanging in right now. So let's bring our feet close together. Let's place that stick at three o'clock position. Reach up with that right hand. Bring that left hand across sternum level so we make sure that stick is gonna be nice and secure. If you're a little bit taller or longer arm span, longer wingspan, and, you're, and the stick is a little bit too short, simply use an elevated platform and that'll instantly give you some extra length on that stick, all right? Right hand, three o'clock position, left hand, bring that across. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna step back with the right foot, take a nice big step back, don't be dainty with that step. As you step back, you're automatically gonna drop down towards the floor, and now let's rotate to the left. Step back up. Let's go three more, ready? Step back with the right, drop down towards the floor. So we got that nice right arm line activation, some rotation. Let's go two more, ready? Step back, let's go one more. Step back, now let's switch sides. Let's go four on the other side. Stick is at nine o'clock, left hand up, rope grip, bring that right hand across. Here we go, step back with the left foot, nice big step back, rotate to the right. Keep this left hip, or this right hip straight. Step back, let's go three more reps. Step, drop, and rotate. Come back up, let's go two more, ready, here we go. Step back, drop, and rotate. One more, last one, here we go. Step back, drop, and rotate. Back to center, and relax. Nicely done on that. Now let's get a little thoracic rotation in here. Wide base with the feet. And we're gonna make our slap shot a little bit more dynamic this morning to start with, of course. Stick is parallel with the floor, arms are extended. The stick is in the low back. Don't bring that stick up too high. So it should be right above, right in the low back above your butt. Okay, ready? We're gonna go into the hinge pattern. So we're hinging, pushing the hips back. Soft angle at the knees, so keep those lower leg bones nice and straight and centered, vertical to the floor. And now bring that right hand down and across the body. Place it on the floor, give it a quick pull and bring it back up. And now to the left. Don't move those hips, so you're only bringing the stick across as far as you don't have to move the hips. Place it on the floor, give it a quick pull. Switch, bring the right stick across, pull, come back up, left, pull, 
right, set it on the floor, pull, bring it back up, bring the left side down, set it on the floor, pull, one more of each. Right side down, pull, and one more. Left side comes across, pull, and relax. Excellent. Okay, so let's go ahead, head to the floor, all right? So we're gonna lay down on our backs. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna work on those glutes. So let's get some glute bridging in, and you're gonna use the stick to actually create resistance for yourself. So, you're on your back, set your feet just about uh, shoulder width apart. So if you look at your hips, you should see about three or four inches between your legs. The stick is gonna go right where that crease is. So right where the crease of that hip is. You don't want your feet too far out. So make sure you bring your feet in, but I don't want them in too close to your butt. So what you can actually do is, Try to bring your feet in as close as you can or pull your heels in as close as you can to your hip, to your butt, and then just walk forward just a little bit. All right? From here, overhand grip on the stick, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna tuck the pelvis. So imagine there's a little marshmallow under the small of your back and give that guy a little squeeze, push. Squish that marshmallow, and that's gonna tuck that pelvis underneath. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna push down on the stick, so push. You should feel your lats engage, driving, and now drive the glute bridge up. You're still pushing down on that stick, and then slowly bring it back down. Make sure you keep that pelvis tucked. The pelvis tucked is key so that you stay out of the low back. We don't want the lumbar spine or the low back to be driving this movement. Here we go again, ready? Push, let's try to drive down at about 50 to 60% of your tension. Squeeze the glutes and bridge up. Down slow. Let's go three more reps. Ready? Push. Let's go about 70% tension this time. Push. Squeeze the glutes. Bridge up. If you start to feel it in the low back, make sure you tuck that pelvis or decrease the elevation. Maybe you're exceeding your range of motion. Ready? Two more. Ready? Push. 70-80% tension. Drive up. Push. Breathe. Down slow. And one more. Ready? Make sure you squish that marshmallow to start with. Push down about 80% tension and drive up. So your hips should be meeting the resistance of the stick. Down slow. And relax. All right, now let's give those hamstrings a little bit of a uh, glutes, a little bit of a rest. And now we're going to do a single leg. All right, so your position isn't changing, but now you're going to bring your right leg up. All right, so you can see that position. Now, same exact steps. Squish that little marshmallow. We're just doing one leg at a time. We're going to push down on, on the hips with the stick at about 60, 70% tension and bridge up. Down slow, let's go three reps. Push, and let's go four actually. Bridge up, down slow, two more. Let's give it about 70, 80% tension on, that, on these last two reps. Bridge up, down slow, one more. Ready, tuck that pelvis, bridge up, down slow. Nice. Now, let's go ahead and switch feet. Bring that right foot down. Bring that left leg up. All right? Okay, here we go. Squish that marshmallow again. Push down on the stick at about 60, 70% tension. Squeeze that right glute and bridge up. Down slow. Three more reps. Ready? Push, bridge up. Down slow, two more, here we go, ready, push. You're about 80% tension, push, bridge up. Down slow, one more, here we go, last one, push, bridge up. 
Get that right glute working. Push, down slow, and relax. Nicely done. Okay, so glutes are fired up. Now let's work that midsection. We're gonna really work that core cylinder and really get the hip, hip, uh, ribs and hips connected as one unit. So as you're going through this movement, we want to make sure that we don't have, we don't disengage that connection. So if at any time through this movement, if you feel like you can't keep the ribs and hips solidly connected, then don't exceed that range of motion. And so I'll coach you through that. Here we go. Both hips up at 90 degrees, all right? At least 90, do not start breaking the opposite direction. We gotta have the upper leg bones at least 90 degrees. Stick is right against the quads. Make sure that your hips are neutral. So what I mean by that is, when you line up, don't be externally rotated or don't be internally rotated. Try to make sure your upper and lower leg bones are stacked. So I'll take that side profile again. Overhand grip. And from here, I'm gonna push I'm gonna squish that little marshmallow. And now at about 60, 70% tension, I'm gonna drive the stick into the legs. And I want you to push back with those legs. Those legs should reflexively start pushing back already. But I want you to, if, if you want, crank it up a little bit more by actively pushing those hips back. Breathe. And relax. Whew. Take a few seconds. Okay, so now we're gonna start progressively adding on to that. If things start to get too challenging as, if, as we add these little progressions, then just stay at the level where you feel that you're working well at, all right? Okay, hips up. Stick is across the quads. Squish that little marshmallow, and now push. Drive that stick into the quads. 70% tension. Now lift your head. Just tuck your chin and lift your head just one inch off the floor. Doesn't have to be that far. Breathe. Build to 80, push a little bit harder. And relax. Beautiful. Okay, so now we're gonna start to change the lever lengths on our lower appendages. So we'll start to extend the leg and that's gonna increase core demand, all right? Here we go, hips up, knees at 90 degrees. Okay, squish that little marshmallow, and at 70, 80%, push that stick into the quads, push. Breathe. Now slowly extend the right leg. Try to keep that right quad in contact with the stick. Do not let that right quad fall off. Slowly bring your right foot back down, and now push your left leg up. Keep contact with the stick. Do not let that left quad pull away from the stick. Slowly bring it down, and relax. Whew, nice. Some great core work going on here. Take a few seconds, we're gonna do that again. Okay, so now this time, we're gonna add both legs simultaneously. Okay, ready, here we go. Get ready into position, hips at 90 degrees. Squish that little marshmallow with the small of your back. Drive that stick into the quads at about 70, 80% tension. Breathe, and now slowly extend both feet up to the ceiling. We're not losing contact with the stick. Down slow, and relax. Beautiful. Take a little breather. Whew. That'll wake you up first thing in the morning. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna change the stick position. So instead of being parallel or horizontal to your body, it's gonna be vertical and in line with your body, all right? So, let's go ahead and get set up. Follow my lead here. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna bring my right, my left hip up into flexion. My right leg is gonna be straight. 
make sure that this right hip is staying neutral. So what I mean by that is, when you set up, don't let this right hip flop out to the side. You actually have to use these tissues here to pull that leg in so that the foot and the knee are facing the ceiling. All right? So there's that. Left hip is at 90 degrees. Dorsiflex that left ankle. And now we're gonna place one end of the stick on the top of the left foot. And we're gonna bring the stick into the right hand. So we're using that contralateral pattern. Left foot, right hand, and then bring your left hand behind you also. Now what we're gonna do here is squish that little marshmallow. And now 50% tension, push the stick into the top of the left foot. Drive, push. You're gonna feel that whole left leg drive back. You're gonna feel that core structure activating. Push. And relax. Good. Now, we're gonna move the stick to the quad because we're gonna get a lot more drive here. So now let's bring that left hip up, move the stick so the one end of the stick is sitting on top of the left quad. Okay, ready? Squish that little marshmallow, and now 70% tension, drive. Push that stick right into the quad, push. Build to 80, push harder, squish that little marshmallow, push. And relax. So, with the stick on the quad, it may have been a lot easier. You can drive more force. With the longer lever length, it may have been too much stimulus or harder for some people. So go wherever you feel that you can drive the most force. So if you're really good, then place your uh, stick right here on the top of the foot. If you need to regress a little, then drive, then place it right here on the quad. I'll stay on the quad so that way you guys can see what I'm doing there. Okay. Ready, same position, left quad, right hand with the stick. Okay, squish that little marshmallow with the small of your back, and now push that stick into the quad at about 70, 80% tension, push. Now lift your head just one inch off the floor. Lift your right heel just one inch off the floor, and lift your left hand just one inch off the floor, push. Build to 90, push harder. And relax. Beautiful. You should have felt that. Once you lift your appendages up, you should have really, really felt that core structure under full demand. Now let's switch to the other side, okay? So now we have the right hip up into flexion. The left leg is extended. Remember, make sure that this left hip is not flopping open. Pull that in. And so the knee, left knee and the left foot should be facing the ceiling. We're gonna start with the stick on top of the right foot and in the left hand. Bring your right hand back into the overhead position if you can. If this is tough on your shoulder, then just simply leave your arm off to the side where it's, where it's more comfortable. Maybe you have a shoulder injury or whatever and going into the overhead position isn't viable for you. Alrighty? Okay, here we go. Squish that little marshmallow with the small of your back, and now push. Drive the stick into the top of the right foot. 70% tension, push. Breathe. And relax. Excellent. Now, let's move the stick down. Bring that right hip back up. Place the stick at the quad. Okay, ready? Here we go. Squish that little marshmallow with the small of your back, and now push, drive. Give me 70% tension, push. Build to 80, push harder, push. Keep both ankles dorsiflexed. Means pulling those toes towards your shins. And relax. Whew. Okay, so now we're gonna progress, and we're gonna start to lift appendages. Okay, ready? Here we go. Same setup, arm back or off to the side if you're having shoulder issues. Okay, here we go. Squish that little marshmallow with the small of your back. 
Push that stick into the quad. It's 70, 80% tension. Lift your head one inch off the floor. Lift your left heel one inch off the floor. Lift your right hand one inch off the floor. That's not very far, folks. Keep the ribs to hips. Keep swishing that marshmallow. Build to 80. Build to 90 if you can. Push, push, and relax. Woo. Awesome. Come on up, folks. Woo. Nicely done. All right. So that's some core, uh, our dead bug floor based core work. You can start to mix that in whenever you feel appropriate. Mix in a couple sets during your workouts. It'll feel really good. All right, now let's start to stretch the hamstrings, okay? So we're gonna add some rotation into this hamstring stretch also. So feet close together. I'm gonna take that left heel, I'm gonna slide it forward, not too far. Stick is at 12 o'clock position with the bottom of the stick slightly angled in. Here, since I'm working the left hamstring, I wanna make sure, because it connects with the right shoulder, I wanna make sure the right hand is on top. So make sure that right hand is in superior position or top position about chin level or so. So let's push the stick into the floor about 30% tension. And now hinge. Sinking the butt backwards. Do not let the hand slide. Breathe. You should feel a nice stretch in the left hamstring. And now 30% tension, let's push that left heel down into the floor. And now let's rotate the stick to the left. And as you rotate the stick to the left, you should feel an increased pull in that left hamstring. Bring it back to center, come back up. Take a second, we're gonna do that a couple more times. Okay, ready? Here we go. Push the stick in the floor about 30% tension and hinge. Sink your hips straight backwards. Soft angle at that right knee, keeping the back nice and flat. You don't wanna round the back when you're working on the hamstring, you'll lose that stretch. So if you actually round the back really quickly right now, you'll actually feel that reduction in that stretch factor on that left hamstring. So now flatten your back, and you're gonna feel how that really starts to put that stretch factor into that left hamstring. Push the left heel down into the floor at 30% tension also, and now move the stick to the left. So once we did that little demo with the difference between rounding the low back and making sure it's flat and its effect on the hamstring, now you'll have that body awareness that's necessary to know that if you're in the right position or not when you're stretching your hamstring, all right? One more rep, here we go. 30% tension, push, and now hinge. Last one. Nice flat back, pushing that left heel into the floor, and now move the stick to the left. You're feeling that nice stretch to the left, lat, left lateral tissues also. Internally rotate your left leg. Breathe, come back to center, and relax. Let's switch sides. So bring your left foot back, switch hand position, left hand is on top, and now just slide that right heel forward. So you can see my ankle is dorsiflex, so I'm pulling my toes towards my shin bone, and now 30% tension, I'm gonna push that stick down into the floor, and I'm gonna hinge. I'm gonna push my butt straight back. I have a soft angle here at the left knee. So my left lower leg bone is staying perp perpendicular or vertical to the floor, 90 degrees at that uh, left ankle joint. Soft angle at that left knee. And now push the right heel down into the floor. Push, 30% tension. And now move the stick to the right. Right away, you may feel that you're a little bit tighter on one side than you are the other, and that's perfectly normal. It's 
what we do as humans, we get stuck in the same movement patterns, come back to center, come back up. It's just we want to be able to recognize where we have some limitations so that we can work on opening up and removing those limitations. Okay, ready? Here we go. 30% tension, push and hinge. Breathe, nice flat back. Push that right heel down into the floor, 30% tension. And now move the stick to the right. Breathe. Come back to center, come back up, and one last rep. Here we go, ready? Push and hinge. Push that right heel into the floor, and now move the stick to the right. And now internally rotate that right leg, so turn your knee and right foot in towards your spine. You're still pushing that right heel into the floor. Release, come back to center and relax. Nice. Okay, so let's have a seat on the floor. Let's work those adductors, okay? So we're gonna work the adductors, the adductor magnus. So we're gonna do that frog sit. We're gonna add a little rotation to the frog sit today. Okay, so nice wide base with the feet. If you can, if not, start a little bit closer together, okay? Nice tall spine, grab the stick, place the stick under the balls of the feet. Overhand grip on the stick. And from here, what we wanna do is grab the stick with your toes. Remember, your toes are just stubby little versions of your fingers, all right? So grab, you may, if you get some cramping in your feet, just ease out of it, walk around a little bit, go back into it and the cramping will dissipate once the body knows you want this on a repeatable level. Okay, from here, pull up with the spine. Imagine that someone has a string at the top of your head and is pulling you up towards the ceiling. Lengthen that spine. And as you do that, you're gonna feel how you pull tension into the stick, and you're gonna feel that tension reciprocate all the way into the adductors. And now push your knees away from each other. They don't like each other, so they're trying to get away from each other. So your right knee is pushing out to three o'clock, your left knee is pushing out to nine. Chest up, breathe. They wanna go in opposite directions. Don't arch the back, lengthen the spine. Ease off tension. All right, now take that left hand and move it over so that it's centered because now we're gonna add rotation. So the left hand is centered and then just place the right hand next to it. Okay, ready? Grab the stick with your toes, grip. Nice tall spine, lengthen that spine. Push the knees away from each other. Release the right hand and now rotate to your 12 o'clock or six o'clock position, sorry. As you do that, Pull a little bit harder with that left hand. Don't lean back. Nice tall spine still. Pushing those knees away from each other. Come back to center and ease off. Okay, now we're gonna add rotation in the opposite direction. So bring your right hand to 12 o'clock position. So if you draw a line from your sternum forward, the right hand should be right there. Place the left hand right next to it. Grab the stick with your toes. Nice tall spine. Push the knees away from each other. And now take that left hand, release, and rotate to your six. Pull a little bit harder with that right hand. Push those knees away. For me, I feel this way more than I do on the other side. So that can be a normal thing. So don't think that that's odd. Come back to center and relax. Okay, now we're gonna actively pull the feet apart on the stick. So if you can, now start to take a little wider stance with your feet. Okay, ready? Overhand grip, 
Take a little wider grip. Okay, grab the stick with your toes. Sit up nice and tall, tall spine. Push the knees away from each other. And now with your feet, try to shorten the stick. So you can see how my feet activated a little bit more. And you're gonna feel more tension into the adductors right away. You're trying to shorten the stick with your feet while simultaneously trying to externally rotate the hips. So you're still trying to push those knees away from each other. And now pull the stick apart with your feet. You're trying to lengthen the stick with your feet. You should feel your outer hips a little bit more. Nice tall spine still. Shorten the stick with your feet. Breathe. Lengthen the stick with your feet. Pull apart on that stick. Breathe. And relax. Fantastic. Come on up, folks. All righty. And now let's get some bow and arrow in, all right? Whew. Okay, so we're gonna work that lateral bow and arrow. Feet close together, about shoulder width apart actually. Place that stick at three o'clock position. Left hand, or right hand just above where the sticker is. Keep your hips square, left hand over the top. Push that hip out to nine o'clock and now push the stick away to your three. Breathe. Full inhale, full exhale, let that head tilt. Keep those hips still, and now let the stick move forward. Do not move the hips. And now pull the stick back. Don't let the ribs flare though. So brace those abs. Let the stick go forward. Pushing that hip out to nine o'clock still. Pull the stick back. Working those shoulders, flossing the shoulders. Forward and back. Back to center and relax. Let's switch sides. Stick is at nine o'clock. Left hand is right above where the sticker is. Right hand over the top, palm facing forward. Push your hip out to three o'clock first and then extend the stick away from you. Both arms are straight. Breathe. Full inhale, full exhale. Now, do not move the hips. Keep your torso still. Brace those abs. Move the stick forward. Now, pull the stick back. Let your head tilt also. Forward. Back, flossing those shoulders. One more of each, forward and back. Back to center and relax. Now, let's go sagittal or forward on the bow and arrow. Bring your feet together, place that stick in the right hand, okay? So it's one arm's length away, see how far that stick is? Now I'm gonna take my, split my feet. So right now I'm gonna go with my right foot back and my left foot forward. Now the purpose of this is to get a nice split in the hips and when we drive tension into the stick, we're actually trying to really focus on driving tension into the hips to separate those hips and get more range of motion in the hips. So you can see where the bottom of the stick is actually about a good 10 inches in front of those toes. Now, take that left hand over the top. So both palms are facing nine o'clock or to the left position. Push the stick into the floor at 30% tension with the top hand or your left hand. So your left hand is pushing down. Now, split the hips. So what I mean by that is I'm trying to drive my left leg backwards and my right leg forward. And as I do that, it actively pushes tension into the stick. My top arm stays straight. You can see I'm not overstressing the, the stick. I'm just having enough bowing in the stick to really lock down my obliques right now and really get that connection with the hips. My front heel stays flat. I can work dorsiflexion of my left ankle at the same time. Ease off 
And now let's switch sides. So bring that right foot up so it matches the same position as the left foot. Switch hands. So my left hand is on the bottom. Step back with the left foot. Nice big stride. Right hand on top. Both palms facing three o'clock position. With the right hand, I'm gonna push down into the ground. Push, about 30% tension. And now split those hips. So my left hip is driving backward. My right hip is driving forward. And that actively pushes tension into the stick. I am not actively pulling with that top arm. I should be reflexively pulling with that top arm. Working dorsiflexion of the right ankle. Breathe. And relax. Whew. Great work today, everybody. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate, love everybody out there. Thank you as always. Be sure to check out our stuff on YouTube, all our content. Uh, please feel free to subscribe. We'd really appreciate that. Uh, we are bringing some video in with our podcasting, so that's the reason why the podcasting is taking a little bit longer. I do apologize. We're novices at this, so we're, we're learning on the fly, along with you guys at home, learning about stick mobility on the fly. So appreciate your patience and hanging with us on that, but we will be getting some new podcasts out to you soon. Uh, be good, everybody. Treat each other nicely out there. Till Saturday, when you guys see Coach Ray Bailey, peace.